It's another math day with teacher Jenny and we are here to talk about solving rational inequalities. So let's start with this one. Now everything here will be with the pattern single term on the left side and a zero on the right side. So let's have this first example. We are to solve 4 minus x over x plus 3 greater than 0. So how do we solve this one? Since your right side is 0 and the left side is a single term, then this is very easy for us. We are simply going to equate our first I mean numerator and then the denominator to 0. So we'll start. We have here 4 minus x. So whatever is on the numerator, you will be equating that to 0. So 4 minus x equal to 0. Solving for x, we transfer 4 to the other side. So we are only left with negative x equal to negative 4. Next, we need to omit the negative on your x there. So we might do multiply the left side and so with the right side with negative 1. Or we can divide that with negative 1, the left side, and the right side. So dividing this one by negative 1 and also this one, this is now equal to positive 4. So that is our value on the numerator. Now next we go to the denominator. Again, we are going to equate that to 0. x plus 3 equal to 0 there. So solving for x, x now will be equal to negative 3. Now, Take note on this. Whatever you obtain on the value of the variable on that denominator, instead of you writing that as equal to, we are going to write it as not equal to because this is or this number here will make our denominator equal to zero. And once we have a denominator which is zero, it's a no-no for us because take note when you say numerator with any number divided by a zero, that's a no-no, that's no for us, that would lead to an undefined answer. So in order for us not to make it undefined, we are going to set it as not equal to instead of you setting that one as equal to. Now, take note, whatever you've obtained on the numerator and the denominator, that will be considered as our critical number. So critical number, other books refer to this one as meaningful numbers. So they are the same. So they are now our basis for us in determining as to what region is going to be our possible value in. So after that one, we are going to set that in our number line or plot that in our number line and take note in plotting those two things that once you are plotting values on a number line, you might have this one as a hollow. Hollow, this is possible if your sign in there is greater than or you can have there less than so that will be your identifier now for the other one we have the shaded this is for the closed or this is what we call as closed interval and this is normally used whenever you have there greater than or equal to or you can have there less than or equal to now on those things to remember we have the critical values 4 and the negative 3 and so with those kinds of graphing then we might go and graph our critical values so take note critical values we have their x equal to 4 and then we have their x not equal to negative 3 going back let us try to check sorry on that okay we have that um correctly so now we have the critical numbers we are going to Plug that, plot, that, plot that in our number line. So plotting that in would mean we can either choose, we can do the estimating here. 
So make sure that you have there a, an area for you to do a solution on. So let me just have it like this one is my negative 3. And I can have here um, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So that is very long. So let us just have it approximately. I'll be having my 4 in here. The reason here why we do estimating on the number line is for us to know what numbers or a space to do a solution with. So here, right after plotting that in, we are considering how our graph would look like. When we say positive 4, that is from the numerator. Since that is from the numerator, we will be basing our plotting on this symbol here. Since that is greater than, that means our plotting on the graph would be a hollow. So going back, for 4, that will be hollow. And for negative 3, we do not want to base that one on your inequality symbol, but rather we are basing that one to our symbol here. This is not equal to. Once you have the not equal to symbol, that means we are not including that number, and that will be symbolized as a hollow. Now, always remember this. The value for your x obtained on the denominator will always be hollow. It will never change. It never happens that you will have there a shaded one. I hope that helps. Now, right after plotting, we are now ready to divide the region into or divide the number line into different regions. We have region 1, region 2, and then region 3. Now, your region 1, that is with the values negative 4, negative 5, negative 6, negative 7, until negative infinity. So let me just have it like um, choosing on. You can actually choose any number in there. So let me just choose on my x equal to negative 5. You can actually choose negative 4, negative 7, negative 8 in there. It really doesn't matter. So we are now testing out our region, whether this will be satisfying our original inequality, and that will be taken as a possible solution if that is true. So taking consideration on our inequality, we have 4 minus x over x plus 3. That will be greater than 0. So plugging in the chosen value, we have there 4 minus x will get the negative 5 over x will be replaced by negative 5 plus 3 will not be greater than 0. This is a question mark because we are testing out whether region 1 is really true for this inequality here. If that is true, then that will be considered as part of the solution on your inequality. Next, we have here 4 minus negative 5. That becomes a 4 plus 5 over negative 5 plus 3, it's negative 2, will that be greater than 0? As you can see, this is positive already, and the bottom part is negative. That would lead to a negative answer, and negative numbers are not greater than 0. So that makes it false for this statement. So moving on, we have 9 over negative 2, which gives off negative number. And this is not true for greater than 0 in there. So since that is not true, we are now omitting as the possible solution on region 1. So let's go to region 2 and test that out. So we choose on um, in between numbers. We have negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, I mean 3. So we are only choosing those numbers. So let me just choose on x equal to 0. So plugging that in on my 4 minus x over x plus 3 greater than 0. So we have 4 minus 0 over 0 plus 3. And we are testing that out whether that will be greater than 0. So 4 minus 0 is 4. 0 plus 3 is 3. This is greater than 0 because they are positive. Since that is true, then we are taking in region 2 as part of our solution. Now next, we test out our x in here. 
Now, getting an x on this part, we can have our x equal to 7. And plugging that in, you can actually choose 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and so on. So plugging that in on my 4 minus x over x plus 3, greater than 0. So we have 4 minus 7 over 7 plus 3. Will that be greater than 0? 4 minus 7 is negative 3, and 7 plus 3 is 10. That would lead to a negative answer, so this is not true. Then that means this is out of our possible solution. Now, we only have region 2 as the possible solution in there. And writing your solution, we are only considering region 2. And we consider our boundary on region 2. We have negative 3 and positive 4. So writing the solution in an interval notation, we can copy the boundaries. We have their negative 3 and then we have 4. The boundary numbers are to be recognized because I'm drawing here a straight line as an indicator of the boundary in there. So that means our boundary is negative 3 and 4, which is part of the critical number in there. And writing your symbol is you are going to consider this one, which is a hollow, and this one, which is also a hollow. And moving on, writing, going back here, if this is now a hollow, your answer will be written as hollow. And you've got the close there will be written with open bracket or a close bracket in there. So upon checking off, we have here a hollow. So that means negative 3 will get a parenthesis and 4 will get a parenthesis. So there you go with the solution of that example. I will be um, making a video of another example in this kind of format and another video with different formats so that you'll get used to the process. And take note, everything here is with the same process. So this is really easy for you. Once you get used to the process, that means everything will work perfectly fine with you. And you are safe in solving rational inequalities. Again, this is Teacher Jenny with you and hoping that you are doing fine learning at home. I'll see you on my next video. Bye.